what is the uh, molecular geometry of NO3 minus? So uh, first, we're just going to uh, um, draw our Lewis structure. So for NO3 minus, we just need to identify our valence. So for N, we have five uh, valence electrons. And for O, we have six valence electrons. And for NO3 minus, that means we have uh, five here, three times six here, and then we have to add one for the negative charge. So that's six, 12, 18, plus five is 23, plus one is four. So we have 24 valence electrons. And so now um, we're going to build up around our central atom, much as we have. So put in things roughly as they would. OK. And then we can join up some of these dots. And we're missing an electron because of the negative charge, so we can plunk that in to one of these lone pairs. Um, so now if we look at this structure, <clears throat> well, this oxygen here is happy, so he's um, got a full octet, um, but it has uh, seven electrons around it. Right, so counting each of the lone pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and half from the bond, so seven. It normally wants six, so there's a minus one charge there. Uh, this nitrogen's happy. He's got a full octet um, and five electrons around it, so that means he's neutral. This oxygen has not a full octet, and this oxygen also has not a full octet. So, not full. So that means uh, this is likely not the correct structure. So then from here we need to uh, migrate things a little bit. So <clears throat> one way to alleviate this strain would be, uh, well, to take this and form a bond, um, and then migrate that electron over. Um, so then we'd have that structure. Which now, um, if we look, we have full octet everywhere, so everyone is fairly happy there, so that's good. Uh, if we check the charges, this oxygen has seven, so it's got a minus one charge. The nitrogen has four, he wants five, so that means he's got a plus one charge. And this oxygen has seven, so it's got a minus one charge. And then this oxygen has six, wants six, so it's neutral. So the separation of charge is not so great, but the full octet likely means it's the correct structure. And if we sum the charges, minus one plus one is zero, minus one is negative one, so we have the correct charge for the species. So this is likely the correct structure for NO3. Now, uh, if we want to know the molecular geometry, <clears throat> we would use Vesper theory. So uh, for mo the most part, these can be looked up. But if we look at our central atom, <clears throat> it's bonded to three other species. So this in Vesper theory is an AX3, um, which is different than if it had a lone pair. Um, or more constituents, obviously. 
Um, we can understand, uh, we can also look at this and try to rationalize a little bit um, because Vesper uh, just states that electrons repel each other and or at least that's the idea behind it is that they repel each other to be as far apart as possible and in fact with a double bond here uh, and all these lone pairs here these guys are going to really want to bend out this way and so then the molecular geometry is going to be likely something where the species get as far apart as they can and there's no need really to leave the plane and so it'll likely be something like this which is a planar molecule all but all bent out to end so this would be a a trivial planar molecule. And okay, so going through the solution, um, so we're going to identify, get the right Lewis structure, and and then we can check from here what it is, um, and we'll find its trigonal planar. So that looks good. All right. And I guess, um,